Howdy, y'all. I just wanted to give you an update on the Perdici, actually. Uh, we got this here in the garage now. Let me step back a little bit to get a better picture, and I'll flip it around. And, uh... Got the engine all mounted in. It took a little bit and some modifications, that's for sure, to make engine mounts for it. Let me see if I can give a better view here. Yeah, got hard mounts and uh, welded them in. Welds look shitty, of course, because I did the welding. Uh, but they are welded in good and solid and, and it does hold, so. I guess that's what matters in the end. Haven't got the transmission in yet. That's sitting right here. And that's what I'm about to work on now. So I'll let you know how it goes. Howdy y'all. Um, uh, dropping the oil pan on Frankenstein today. Uh, Cause I didn't like the looks of the oil that I drained out of it. Uh, I just drained the oil again and stuff and it just looked completely burnt again. So, and it came out like water. So I ordered some 2050 Castrol uh, with zinc additive already in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and get, I'm gonna drop in the old pan now, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check all the bearings, mains and rods. Uh, just to verify that they're okay and that's not where any metal's coming from. It's just tiny little flakes, but still, I know when you rebuild an engine, you're always going to have that when you're putting all new parts in it. But I just want to be on the safe side. I don't want to blow this engine after all the money I put into it. So, dropping the oil pan right now, and then uh, uh, when the oil gets here and stuff, I'll put the filter in and take it back out again. Well, fellas, I got the uh, uh, oil pan down, and this is what I just found in the bottom of it, piston rod nut. So that's not good. Just one, but uh, that's definitely not good. So I must not have had them torque tight enough or something. I don't know what. I put them on everything to torque specifications. So maybe I need to lock tight these babies on there. Normally you don't have to do that with piston rods. You just torque them to spec and they're usually good. But these are the stock rods, so who knows. Well, Frankenstein is all back together now. I've checked all the rod bearings and they're all at 45 plus. Now, there was only one set and it was the number six piston. It had the, had the rod bearing nut that fell off down in the pan. And, and the other one was loose on that same rod. But I checked every other rod, turned the engine over slowly, getting it in the right place. And uh, all of them were already tight. None of them were loose at all. So it's just the one rod. I, I might have missed it. So what I'm thinking. Maybe I just snugged that one up and never torqued it. And I just missed it. Anything's possible. I know I was trying to get this done, you know, get this motor done so I can get it in here and get on with it, so. Uh, I'll leave it off there for now until I get some oil. I can't fire it up right now. There's no engine oil in there, filter on it. Uh, I ordered it, so it's coming in the mail. It's supposed to be here tomorrow or the next day, so. Hopefully it'll be here tomorrow and uh, we can fire it up and listen and see what we can hear. Hopefully it's all good now. Howdy y'all, I got uh, put the new spark plugs in and I put the new uh, Castrol High Zinc Additive Classic uh, 20W50 in and I now have really high oil pressure, higher than I've ever had before. Let me flip this around and show you. Yeah, with the other oil I was using, it never got over 60. And when it warmed up, it got uh, all the way down to 10 PSI. So I'm hoping this oil will fix that problem. Well, I decided to take Frankenstein out for a little test drive, see how the new shocks worked, and they felt really good, and I had much better control over the steering, but I still needed to put some power steering on. 
that would help out the rest of the way. And I did come up with two major problems on the way back. Um, blew my bottom radiator hose and the bottom plate that holds the spring up on the passenger front shock, the brand new shock, that plate broke off, slid down the shock. And I'll show you here. This is what it's supposed to look like. Well, not the water dripping from the bottom radiator hose, but that's how the shock is supposed to look like with the plate up there. And then we'll take you around to the other side here. And that's what it currently looks like. Slid right on down past that, so I'm gonna have to get the spring compressed back up somehow and uh, put that plate back up on the bumps because there's little bumps right here. You probably can't see them, they're right behind the, the spring and that's what they, they go on. They're supposed to be sitting up above that. And this one just popped right off. One trail ride and that's all it took. So I'm gonna try to use the MIG welder once I get them back up there and MIG weld a little bit on both sides some little tack welds on like one on this side and one on this side for each one on both sides to make sure that doesn't happen again and I don't think I'm ever gonna buy these chrome hoses again they are horrible they're all metal hoses and those parts seem fine it's flexible but uh, I've had to change the inserts inside here several times now not just this one but the one on the top top hasn't broken in a, while, in a while but this bottom one has this is the first time the bottom one's ever broken so I have to unscrew that take that off and I think I got one insert left that I can put on it but I really don't want to reuse this radiator it's way too small for a V8 it was supposed to be for the inline six that was originally in the Jaguar and that's why I left it in there it already had a fan on it and a shroud and I was hoping that it would keep it you know 210 halfway and it'd be fine but it's not after you drive it for a little at idle it doesn't go over 200 but when you're driving it it goes to like 220 230 that's too hot so and just on the way back it hit 250 and I knew something was wrong, so I pulled it in the driveway, stopped, shut it off, and leaking water everywhere, blew the bottom radiator hose. So there goes another gallon of antifreeze. But I got a few radiators I can look at and make a decision on, and I'm going to have to get a bigger fan as well for it. So I may you take the brand new fan that I bought for the Jeep Cherokee. Uh, because I bought a new fan right there, electric fan. And I'm hoping, because uh, that's for a V8, that uh, it'll keep it cool enough. I just got to figure out what radiator I'm going to use now. But uh, that's where we're sitting right now. I'm letting it cool down. Then I'm going to fire it up and go park it. And I got to fix that spring tomorrow or the next day and uh, get a different radiator put in here. Those are the two flaws that I found so far. But that's the only problem I had taking it out. I mean, the engine didn't blow up. I didn't end my knocking. You know, I kept good oil pressure until it got hot and it dropped down to 10 PSI when it was like sitting at 250, which wasn't good. Uh, it's a brand new oil pump. It shouldn't be doing that with 2050 Castrol in there. At least I'm not leaking any oil. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> so I still got to get a power steering bracket for this, which is 85 bucks, and then I got to get uh, another gallon of antifreeze, which is like 15 bucks for that crap. And uh, put the other insert on there and see what I can do about a radiator. All right, I'll let you all go for now. Have a good one. All right, y'all, I just wanted to make one more little uh, verbal update. 
Uh, but before I drop the oil pan, I had over 3,000 RPMs. If I sit there at idle, it's no noise at all, sounded perfectly fine. If I hit over 3,000 RPMs, it sounded like there was a little bit of a noise coming from the engine. Not really a rod knock, but very close to one. And between that and <clears throat> and wanting to see what was going on inside with the oil and everything, uh, I wanted to check it out. And when I dumped the oil filter, there were some little metal flakes that came out with it. Um, but when I checked all the bearings, they seemed fine. They seemed like they were almost brand new. So I just retorqued everything, put it back up there, and uh, took it for that trail ride, and it was fine then. No more noise, and uh, it ran beautiful. I mean, engine-wise, except for it overheating, obviously. But, but idled good, accelerated good. With the new, I put the new plugs in it. Uh, the E3s, I replaced the old E3s, put the new E3s in. And uh, that fixed the idling. I mean, it just ran beautiful. I was like, wow. So them other old E3s were just uh, too carboned up and too beat up. I've cleaned them several times and put them back in. And uh, I'll keep them as a backup if I ever need to. But I got to pull the plugs now and do a reading on the plugs after the trail ride. Fix the radiator and fix that shock spring. Other than that, I think we are good to go.